going to look at the specific case where when we have in our integration the derivative times some function to the power of n. Basically, I, I guess you could call it the reverse chain rule. Because normally with the chain rule, we'd have some function to the power and we'd bring down the power, lower the power, diff the inside. So if we see we've got the diff the inside times some function to the power of n, we can integrate it straight away. Uh, but because we're going back the other way, it would be add one to the power over the power. So n plus one over n plus one. So let's have a look at it. Sometimes you see questions like this and they give you a, a big hint as to how to do the question because they'll ask you to differentiate a particular function first and then they'll follow it up with go, a, uh, okay, now go and integrate this. And you look at it and think, oh, hang on, these look pretty similar. So differentiate that. Then we'd, uh, well, that's actually one minus x cubed to the power of a half. Bring down the power, lower the power, dip the inside, and we end up with minus 3x squared on 2 root 1 minus x cubed. So then the follow up is hence go and find the integral. Well, well look, we just differentiated the square root of 1 minus x cubed, and we got minus 3x squared on 2 lots of 1 minus x cubed. Very close to what we've got. But we can manipulate that, because what I can do is say, well, hang on a sec. I know that when I differentiate the square root of 1 minus x cubed, I get minus 3x squared on 2 root 1 minus x squared. So if I had that integral, I know it's going to go back to the square root of 1 minus x cubed. But of course, I can't just change it. And so I balance it out. I'll multiply it by minus 2 thirds. And then, you know, the three would cancel, the two would cancel, the negative cancel, and I'd be back to the question they're asking. But now I've got an integral I know the answer to. So I get minus two thirds, the square root of one minus x cubed, plus some constant. So sometimes they're nice to us, and they do things like that. They say, oh, I'll go and differentiate this first. Hence, go and find this integral. Other times, we've got to sort of see that idea ourselves. So there's the square root of two plus x squared, with x out the front. Now we don't have a product rule as such for integration, so I can't just do that. But what I'm looking at, hopefully, I recognize that, uh, well, hang on, the derivative of two plus x squared is two x. So I could rewrite this to be two x, the square root of two plus x squared, multiplied by a half out the front. But now I've got the derivative times the function, and in this case, to the power of a half. So I can now just add one to the power over the power, same as we did before. Uh, and tidying all that up, the twos cancel, and, uh, and of course, two plus x squared to the three on two, mere mortals might leave it like that, but we'll write it as two plus x squared root, two plus x squared. That leads us into another idea, which we'll look at in more detail later, but this idea of substitution. Sometimes you look at this and you go, well, hang on, what's causing the problem here? Well, the problem is the two plus x squared, really. If that was a linear function, I could do it because we've got our useful theorem, remember? If we had a linear function, we can do that. So what about if we made that a linear function? So if I just simply called it u, u is equal to two plus x squared. Now, if I'm gonna change my variables, I've got to change all of them. I can't just have u under the square root sign and, and have x's and dx's there. It doesn't make sense. The x is easy enough. I can rewrite that and come up with an answer. But the dx, what I wrote down for u on the right-hand side there, I could differentiate that. du over dx is 2x. And if I, what's called, separate the variables, so I'm separating the u's and the x's, I get du is 2x dx, and now I can substitute in, because what I've got, there's u underneath the square root sign, but x dx is a half of what we said du is going to be. So I could rewrite that as a half, u to the power of a half du, and I'm now in that situation where I can just add one to the power over the power. So you'll notice it's very similar to what I've got over here, but instead of 2 plus x squared to the 3 on 2, I've got u to the 3 on 2. But hang on, we said u was 2 plus x squared, so now I could substitute back in and get the same answer. 
So that's what's known as integration by substitution. And as I say, we will look at that in more detail um, well, in a few topics time anyway. So later this term, we'll be looking at that idea. I personally think it's quicker if you notice you have derivative times function. And then it's just a lot quicker. So something like this one. X squared over X cubed minus 2 to the power of 3. But hang on a sec. Look at that uh, numerator, X squared. Well, if I differentiate X cubed minus 2, I get 3X squared. So how about I change that and make it 3X squared, but I multiply by a third out the front, and now I have it in the form, the derivative times some function to the power, in this case, of negative 3. So to make it more obvious there, I'll put it into index form. So we can just add 1 to the power, negative 2, over that power. So my 1 third becomes negative 1 sixth. And this time it's a definite integral. So substitute in the 1, substitute in the 0, and we have our answer, minus 1 eighth. If I did this one by substitution, we've got to be very careful. Same question, of course. What's causing me the problem? Oh, well, it's that x cubed minus 2 that's in there. So, OK, I'll, I'll just let u equal x cubed minus 2. du is 3x squared dx. Problem is those limits, 0 and 1, refer to the x values. So when I change my pronumeral, the 0 and 1 now have no meaning. I've got to change those as well. But I've got a little formula up there that would allow me to do it because it's telling me u is x cubed minus 2. So when x is 0, substitute it in, u is negative 2. When x is 1, u is negative 1. So substituting that all in, I now get 1 third of u to the negative 3 du. My limits are now negative 2 and negative 1. With a definite integral, I don't actually have to change back to x's though. Because when I integrate, well, I've changed my limits to u, I can just sub those numbers in, I should get the answer. So substitute in negative 1, substitute in negative 2, and yeah, we, we end up with the, the same answer. So definite integrals, we don't actually have to go back to x. All right, so 5i, just a handful of questions there using that idea.